Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install new front speakers on a 2002 Lexus IS300. The process is the exact same for any first generation Lexus IS300. This includes the model years from 2001 through 2005. So let's get right into it. If you remember in the previous video, we installed a Sony XAV AX1000 double DIN unit. In this video and the next where we install the front and the rear speakers, I'll be running wires directly from the speaker to the head unit. Let's continue from where we left off in the previous video. We routed the speaker wire behind the dash and into the passenger side footwell area. To do a nice clean install, we'll be hiding the speaker wire behind the carpet as shown. After the speaker wire exits on the other side of the carpet near the passenger side front door, we will need to route the wire through this hole in the cabin and into the door through this grommet. But before that, we'll have to remove the old factory speaker on the door. To access the speaker, we first have to remove the door panel. First, remove the screw which is hiding under this cover behind the door handle. Next, there is another Phillips screw in this pocket. Next up is removing the switch trim piece, which I forgot to record. Luckily, it's pretty simple to remove. Just use a pry tool to pry upwards in this area and then remove the two electrical connectors. Pull off this cover over the tweeter and then use a plastic pry tool to pry off the handle trim piece as shown. Pull backwards firmly on the door panel to release the clips. To remove the door panel from the door, push upwards and then pull outwards as shown. Lastly, don't forget to disconnect this little electrical connector for the puddle light. Now we have access to the speaker. First, remove the electrical connector by pushing on the tab and pulling upwards. As you can see, the factory speaker is held in by three rivets, so you'll have to drill them out. Before you start drilling, make sure that the window is all the way upwards so that you don't drill into the glass and shatter it. Once you've removed the three rivets like this, use a pry tool to remove the speaker. Don't forget to remove the spent mandrels of the rivets. Now we can move on to setting up our new speaker for the install. For the front speakers, you'll be using these six and three quarter inch speakers from Kicker and this adapter plate from Metra, which allows us to use the factory holes for mounting our new speaker. When we test mount our new speaker to the Metra adapter plate, we see that it does not sit flush. This is because the adapters are generic and they fit many different kinds of speakers. To fit the speakers that we're gonna use, we'll have to remove these plastic tabs over here. Turning it to the other side, you can see that there's little indentations so that they can snap cleanly off. Just use a pair of pliers and twist them off like this. In addition to removing the inner tabs, you'll also have to remove the outer tab over here. Now you can see that our speaker fits the adapter plate perfectly. Next, we have to fasten our speaker to the adapter plate using self-tapping screws that go through the speaker and into these holes over here. If you order the speaker kit from Crutchfield, you'll get these self-tapping screws in the install kit they provide for a very cheap price. To thread the holes, first start the screw in like this by hand, and then use a screwdriver to drive the screw all the way down into the hole. Repeat the same process for all these holes. Once you've threaded all the holes using the self-tapping screws, align the speaker holes with the adapter plate and then install the screws to secure the speaker to the adapter. The speaker setup is now nice and secure and ready to be installed in the car. For the next step, we can return back to routing the wire from the cabin and into the door. To do this, we'll need to route it through this rubber grommet. Before you start with removing the grommet, it's a good idea to remove this door hinge over here. This will give you a little more space to work with by allowing you to open the door a little more. Keep in mind that after you remove the door hinge, the door can now close without any prior warning. So be very careful with your hands when you're working in there. A plastic pry tool comes in handy when removing the grommet. Never use anything metal because you may puncture the rubber grommet and make it not waterproof anymore. After you loosen the rubber grommet from the hole, you'll need to remove these two electrical connectors so that you can pull the wiring harness out. After you remove the two connectors, you can now pull the wiring harness out through the hole. 
The fit is pretty tight and you have to pull the two connectors out as well, so it takes a little bit of effort. After removing it, we can now see that the wiring harness is held to the grommet using this electrical tape. To insert our new speaker wire through the grommet, we'll have to remove it. You can use a blade to do this. Be very careful not to cut through the grommet and into the wiring harness. Now repeat the exact same process to remove the other side of the rubber grommet that goes into the hole in the door. The wiring harness on this side has a lot of tension because it is attached to the door using these plastic clips. To loosen the harness, simply push down on the tabs and then pull inwards like this. Now that we have some slack in the wiring harness, pull it out so that you can expose the grommet end. After exposing both ends of the rubber grommet, you can now start snaking the speaker wire through it. To pull the speaker wire out from the other side of the grommet, I had to make a cut with a blade over here. This will not cause any issues with sealing as it's going to be sealed up with electrical tape over it anyway. As you can see, cutting open the grommet gives us access to the other end of the speaker wire and we can pull it out. While pulling the wire out, Make sure to give yourself enough length so that you can route the wire through the door and into the speaker area. Route the speaker wire through the hole and into the door like this. To route the other end of the speaker wire through the hole and into the cabin, we'll have to make a cut so that we can separate it over here. This is not a big issue as we can just use butt connectors to join it up again. Now we can go ahead and connect our exposed wire ends to the speaker wires. Just like before, we'll be using butt connectors to connect these two wires together. On the other end of the speaker wires, there's gonna be two female spade connectors as shown. They simply slide on to the male spade connectors on the back of the speaker. The two spade connectors are of different sizes, so there's no way to mix up the positive and the negative. But just to be sure, double check. After you're done connecting the wires to the speaker, Pull whatever extra length of wire you have through the grommet as shown. This makes sure that we have as less cable as possible in the door area so that it can't get caught on the window or anything like that. The kit from Crutchfield also comes with a length of foam insulation tape. Remove the adhesive backing of the tape and apply it to the perimeter of the hole as shown. This will help to reduce vibrations and improve sound quality. Reattach the wiring harness tabs to the door by pushing them through the holes. As you can see, I've also used zip ties to secure the speaker wire to the harness so that it doesn't move around and get caught in the window as it slides up and down. If you remember earlier in the video, we opened up this wiring grommet so that we can thread the speaker wire through. Now we're going to go and reseal it again. However, before we install new electrical tape to seal it up again, we have to cut the speaker wire over here. This will allow us to feed the speaker wire through this hole and into the cabin. There we can use butt connectors to rejoin the ends of the wire we just cut. Once this is done, we can start resealing both the ends of the grommets using electrical tape like this. Push the grommet through the hole in the door so that it gets seated and sealed. A plastic pry tool comes in handy as it allows you to push the grommet through the hole without damaging it. Repeat the exact same process for the cabin side of the grommet. Once the wiring harness is completely fed through, reconnect these two electrical connectors and then use butt connectors to join the two cut ends of the speaker wires. If you have any excess speaker wire left over, use a zip tie to wrap it up and stow it away under the carpet as shown. Now we can start mounting our speaker to the door. First thread the bolts through the holes as shown. 
Now you have to complete the delicate task of mounting the speaker up without pushing on the bolts so that they don't fall into the door. My favorite trick for this process is a magnetic pickup tool. Use the tool to hold the bolt so that when you mount the speaker hole on the bolt, it doesn't fall back into the door. Once the speaker is mounted nice and secure, thread the nuts on. You don't have to tighten the nuts down too much, just make sure they're nice and snug. This completes the installation of the front speakers.